explaining the new coil that I wound and sharing some thoughts on the pole pieces and generators. The toroid coils I wind using this tool that I made. It's just a wooden dowel with notches on the end to hold the wire. And I just use a piece of tape to keep it from unwinding. The coil that's on the generator now is only a single layer. It's a bifiler coil and there's a total of 260 turns between the two halves. I tested that before and it only puts out millivolts and milliamps but connected to a transformer I'm able to light an LED with it. But since the voltage was so low there wasn't much I could do with it so I made this other coil. Now this one has 31 gauge bifiler and there's a total of 1400 turns. This one when I was winding this the bifiler wire I made sure that I didn't get any twists in it because that would end up in a, a thicker coil and I'd be further away from the magnets. So there's two ways I could have wound this. Could have done one coil and then did the crossover and did the other coil. But instead I wound one coil, one layer, did the crossover to the next coil then crossed over and did the next layer and kept doing that all the way around. So I ended up with these crossover pieces here that I used some Corona dope to adhere to the core. I still got to put some tape over the ends here to help hold it in place on the dynamo. I don't know how that's going to work and I haven't tested that yet. It could end up being a fail video later on, but maybe not. We'll just have to see. There's an image from the Dynamo book. So we can see how the Dynamo operates. You have a North Pole and a South Pole. And you know they're going to get an attraction both directions through the toroid core. As the rotor turns, North Magnet's going to go into this coil. South Magnet's going to go into this coil. And since they're on in opposite directions, we'll have a current flowing in the same direction. That current's going to change direction as it passes the center point of the pole piece. So the pole piece is considered the blank space between the coils. The distance of that blank space has a big effect on a generator's output. That's something that I see often overlooked in a lot of generator designs. You can find some information in that book talking about the pole pieces, their, their width, and about pitch. Some of that gets kind of complicated what they're talking about. I don't think it all applies to every single generator design because there's so many different factors involved. When you're talking about the RPM, the the coil design, whatever kind of design you use for a generator is all going to have an effect. So there's pretty much a need for experimentation there on the width of the pole pieces. So having projecting pole pieces on a generator can cause sticky points or an increased need of torque in a generator. But depending on the design, sometimes you can't get away from those because you need to get the magnets so close to the core. I didn't want to add any projecting pole pieces on this toroid. So the only possible drag that could be put on this generator is from the coils themselves. So if we had a generator turned at a fixed RPM, just like if we were turning a screw in a lathe, the number of coils in the generator, just like the feed on a lathe will give you the pitch. So what I'm wondering is if at a fixed RPM if we had a wider pole piece if the current will last longer in the generator than having a smaller pole piece. 
are we pulling the current down before it has a chance to, to continue on naturally? Many times in homemade generators and pulse motors you'll see a coil about this size. That holds a pretty significant amount of wire. A small pull piece, depending on the RPM, may not have enough time to reach saturation. So adding a longer pull piece will give it time to reach saturation. And there could be some experimentation there on on the ends of the pole piece, whether they're rounded or square. I believe the rounded over pole piece will release from the magnet easier. Thanks for watching.